and left, right and centre coming to you live tonight from Bangalore. Karnataka voted in a single phase election today. All 28 seats and the city of Bangalore voted as well. What we're debating right now quite intensely with the panel even before the show started is just how many people actually came out to vote in the city of Bangalore. It's something that's been watched very closely here because there have been citizens groups and awareness drives for months now that have been urging young people in particular to come out and cast their vote. Until 5 o'clock this evening, the numbers don't look very promising from the Election Commission's official figures on their website. What was the final turnout? Well, we will find out shortly. Many issues to talk about in the election here in Bangalore, from voter apathy to the ARP factor, whether the ARP has been able to make an impact in this city at all. And also, to get a perspective from this city on the national picture and the big debate that we're having back in Delhi and in North India about the idea of India, and how this election is, has turned into an ideolo ideological battle. So all that and more with our terrific panel coming up in the next 60 minutes. I'm Nidhi Razdan. Let's first take a look at how Bangalore voted today and some of the key contests in this city. Nandan Nilakani, Infosys co-founder, former head of the Aadhaar Unique Identity Scheme, a technocrat billionaire who now wants to be the Member of Parliament for Bangalore South. His opponent, the BJP's Anand Kumar, has won five times in a row and is hoping to hit a sixer in Bangalore South. The sitting MP is counting on the voters here and the Narendra Modi factor to get him back into Parliament. Well, I think there's a great uh, desire for change and I think, uh, as you know, 18, 18 years of non-performance is uh, being, uh, you, know, you know, how people are reacting. They definitely want change. They want change at the centre. They want to end this paralysis of governance and uh, bring in a new government which will be decisive, stable and performing under the leadership of Narendra Modi. Mangalore Central also saw an ex-Infosys man seeking votes. V. Balakrishnan of the young Ahmadmi party up against the two big national parties. Here in Bangalore Central, where the three major contestants are the first-timers who are challenging the sitting MP uh, from BJP. However, the very factor that the majority of a middle-class population, as well as almost 4 lakh minority voters in this particular constituency, are going to be the key determinants in deciding the victory here. No, I think it's a very easy contest, because you are contesting against an absentee MP. You are contesting against a candidate who is going with a rowdy shooter on campaign and you have a choice to choose a honest candidate who doesn't have any criminal case. Uh, everybody has their own strengths. Uh, we have to f you have to fight everyone. It is a war. It is a contest. Uh, I take each and every candidate very seriously. Balakrishnan's performance here would give an indication of the inroads made by AAP in Karnataka. The perception is that they had good support as shown by enrollments and donations in urban Bangalore, which may have fallen to some extent after the party stepped away from the Delhi government. Bangalore North sees former BJP Chief Minister Sadanand Gowda, hoping he can defeat the Congress candidate Sina Rainaswamy, who got the ticket after a primary was held here. The BJP made it three out of three in Bangalore City last time round, and the party has fielded two of those sitting MPs once again. But there is a less than one-year-old Congress government in the state now, and the BJP cannot take its hold on Bangalore City for granted. With Sneha Koshi, Maya Sharma in Bangalore for NDTV. Well, is the voter turnout in Bangalore then something that the city should be proud of or is it disappointing? Could they have done better? As I said, we're still waiting for the final figures, but we do have some idea till 5 o'clock this evening. Also, how much of an impact did the Aam Aadmi Party have in this city? Because after Delhi, uh, I think the AAP certainly thought that if, it, if there was one place it could replicate its success, uh, it would be in the city of Bangalore. We have a terrific panel tonight, very familiar faces that many of you would recognize uh, from this city. Kiran Majumdar Shaw, of course, of Biocon and also head of the Bangalore Political Action Committee, a kind of citizens group, as it were, that was formed uh, to, to uh, improve uh, the living in Bangalore and has really been trying to urge people to come out and vote and has been actively involved. Mohan Das Pai is vice president of that same group and of course has that link with Infosys from once upon a time. So I want to know how well he knew Mr. Balakrishnan, who is uh, the AAP candidate from uh, Bangalore Central and former CFO of Infosys. No more corporate suits here. Uh, please notice that his image has completely changed in the course of this election campaign. He's in a t-shirt and sandals today. Completely different Mr. Balakrishnan for you. 
Also with us, Krishna Bairi Gowda, Agriculture Minister in the Karnataka Government, Captain Gopinath, we all know him very well, he's here tonight. And uh, we have Malvika Avinash, the Karnataka BJP spokesperson, also joining us tonight. So Kiran Shaw, let me ask you first. As per the Election Commission's figures to 5 o'clock, Bangalore South 50.8%, Central 50.8%, uh, around 50% and North 46.4%. Are you disappointed if that is what the trend continues to be and when polling closes at 6, if it hovers around this figure? Very disappointed because, you know, I was really expecting Bangaloreans to be serious this time about elections. And, you know, the kind of uh, response we saw to a lot of our campaigns was so encouraging that this is extremely disappointing. I think Bangaloreans are not civic-minded. They, are, they can't afford to call themselves citizens. They are simply inhabitants of Bangalore. You are very angry. You sound I am really very, angry. very angry, yes. What, what would have been a respectable turnout according to you? I think we should have crossed 60%. That would have been a good, uh, you know, uh, record or metrics to show that something is improving. Otherwise, these citizens have simply no business to complain and be armchair critics of governance. Mohandas, why everyone was talking about the fact that this ended up being a long weekend, in fact a long week, week-long holiday for many people in the city because of the fact that many holidays came in the way. Are you disappointed if, if this figure hovers finally around 50 to 52, 53 percent, even though it was around 48 percent in these key constituencies, would that, st it's a marginal improvement but barely. So would you be dis as disappointed as Kiran Shaw is today? No, I'm very disappointed because this time the election commission, citizens group like BPAC and others, political parties have done a great campaign. And we thought there'll be more people voting, maybe 55-60% like Kiran says. And we know that in Coorg, the home street was totally booked out. And there was a report in the media today. It means maybe 2 lakh, 3 lakh people and voters have left the city and gone outside. It shows their attitude of callousness to the city of Bangalore. And I think these are basically people who don't have a stake in Bangalore and it disappoints everybody who wants Bangalore to do better because if these people don't consider Bangalore to be the city and go and vote on one single day in five years, I don't think they deserve any consideration. So let me say, extremely disappointing and think all these people have not discharged their duty to themselves, to Bangalore and to the country if they're not voted. So you also believe that 60% would have been a respectable yes. figure? Yes, at least 60%. I think 60 percent would have been a decent figure, a decent figure, not a good figure, but a decent figure considering last time we had something like 47, 48 percent and uh, in the assembly election we had 57 percent. But I must point out the number of voters has gone up last time from 52 lakhs to 74 lakhs. It's a very large increase. But even then, the percentage should have gone up considering many young people came into the voting age. So many, what, many young Mr. people Gowda, came what do you think happened? Because you know, I, I live in Delhi and Delhi had a, a miserable voting turnout of some 51.8% in the last Lok Sabha election in 2009. We had 66% in the assembly polls, which was remarkable. You remember how we had polling was extended till much late into the night. And 65% last week in the Lok Sabha election, which was something that we are very proud of in Delhi. Bangalore is one city. I think many people expected that you would see a similar high turnout. So what do you think went wrong? So one thing, uh, I, I share the uh, disappointment, but yet we must acknowledge that compared to the previous elections, we are seeing about 7-8% increase. If you compare it to the last parliament election, also we are seeing an increase. And if you look at the assembly elections that were held last year, we saw about a 10% increase uh, in the turnout in Bangalore. So there is, uh, you know, incremental substantially incremental uh, uh, responsiveness that we are noticing in Bangalore, which we must not forget on this occasion. So you're not as pessimistic or as uh, as unhappy as Kiran Shaw and Mohan Das Pai? I'm, I'm partly unhappy, but yet I want to acknowledge that the situation is gradually changing. We must not overlook uh, that when we are very ambitious, but I think if things are uh, changing, more and more people are coming out to vote, but, but we must encourage But Mr. Malakrishnan, you know, this has been, I, I have now covered about three or four general elections. I've never seen the kind of buzz and momentum that this election has created, the kind of awareness drives, the kind of campaigns that groups like BPAC have done and other groups in this country. Despite that, if the voting percentage in the city is still below 60, is that a disappointment to you as a candidate, as someone 
from a party that was, you know, trying to usher in change in a new kind of politics. Is that disappointing? It's extremely disappointing because we all ran a campaign to increase the voting share. But India, you can't expect big bang, right? It will increase gradually. The base has increased, so also the percentage. That is a good sign. But if you go and talk to most of the educated class, even today, they are too disconnected with the political thing. I mean, you ask them who is your corporator, they can't name them. Who is your MLA, they can't name them. Who is your MP, they can't name them. But they also don't want to know. That is also one part of it. So we need a lot of active interaction. Probably politicians to take more steps towards the common citizen. They also have to take steps. So we need to improve the interaction. They should understand that unless you get involved more and more, your civic problems are not going to go away. That awareness will happen over a period of time, but the current voting percentage is disappointing. I am hopeful over the next few elections, probably the percentage will increase further. Well, I'm going to ask Malvika a, a question that will provoke her. So, if, if the Modi wave was there, why didn't they come out in larger numbers in Bangalore? Because that's what BJP supporters have been saying, that he's going to bring them out. He's going to bring them out to vote. The 7% increase that came you see is Modi. So they came for well, him. other than that, BJP uh, in the past, about a month ago, soon after the election commission announced the elections, and we realized that April 17th falls in between a long stretch of holidays, you know, before and after, we did complain to them asking for a different date so that, uh, you know, those who went away to Kur could have been prevented from doing so. Uh, having said that... But how is it the EC's fault? I mean, people also have to have a sense of responsibility. It's true. You don't have to go on the holiday. It's true, it's true, but they seem to have. And whatever little you see is perhaps all the activism that has brought forth. The more the activism... Captain Gopinath, why why couldn't Bangalore do a Delhi, according to you? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell that. But before I t uh, say that, I, w I want to also say, I think the worst politician, even if the, even if the one who is scam-tainted with a criminal record, is better than an indifferent, cynical city, youth and middle class. They should hang their head in shame. All these software guys and all the other people who are working in this uh, you know, so-called uh, company, maybe it could be Biocon and uh, all these apartments. I saw some records in some apartments where there are about uh, 2,000 people, only 10 or 12 have come and voted. So it's an absolute shame. They have to hang their head in shame. I think one of the reasons uh, why uh, this is happening, in addition to this, uh, you know, long weekend, they're all in their own clubs and pubs, and they, you know, they go off to these uh, uh, weekend getaways. Uh, uh, I think one of the reasons why it did not happen was that, you know, during the Anna movement, uh, the, during the Anna movement, this Bangalore was the uh, next most vibrant thing. But the moment the Anna movement died down, the AAP in Bangalore did not have a single. Uh, a protest in Bangalore against the local government. For example, there were a lot of scams in the BJP government here. You know, it, it was a, probably the worst scams in the history of India. But the AAP did not make a, a, any protest in Bangalore. So there was no impact. Do you, do you believe it would have been different if AAP had been more active in Bangalore? Absolutely. Just like in Delhi, heads off to KGR. I mean, he sacrificed, you know, he, he, you know, he, he, he took part. He took part against the issue, so he can criticize. There could be differences of opinion on, his, on the methods of his uh, uh, protest, but he took part. But in Bangalore, for example, there was no Loka Ekta. When they took part in the uh, Anna movement against the uh, Lokpal, but in Bangalore, we didn't have a lo uh, Loka Ekta. Every chief minister avoided putting a Loka Ekta. The AAP did not participate in that. Then there were scams after scams after scams. The AAP did not participate. So it just doesn't happen by smart campaigning. People had to pay the price of um, leaving their job. Okay, Ma protesting. Malvika had a comment on what you just said and asked Mr. Balakrishnan about I don't think voting AAP. is directly proportional to AAP's activism. I don't think we should look at it that way. I don't think it they works. They certainly that brought way. out the people of Delhi. It's a fact. Yeah, they did. No, but no uh, across the country, we are yet to see really what they draw from the booths. So I think it's uh, too early to say that vote, voting equals. Aam Aadmi Party or uh, no, activism. Aam Aadmi Party had an effect in the okay. cities. I'll take that to Mr. Balakrishnan first on, on what Captain Gopinath is saying. That in a sense, what he's saying is AAP kind of lost the plot in Bangalore. You should have been more active. You should have been um, more perhaps present uh, in Bangalore and, and raking up the issues that are important here. No, no, we raised all the issues. In fact, we said 
both Congress and BJP were competing to decide who is the most corrupt. They are not talking about any civic issues here. And that is one of the reasons why the voting turnout is what it is. Otherwise, it would have been much, much lower. I think there is anger among the people. They all wanted change. That's why you have seen increase in voting share. Otherwise, it would have been pathetically down than last year. Okay, so you are... So you are saying whatever percentage has come out to vote, if it's whatever marginal yes. increase there may be is because of AAP, you are yes. saying it's Modi, Mr. Gowda. Are you going to say it's Rahul Gandhi? <laughs> no. no, I just want to add another element into this discussion because uh, uh, you know earlier you thought I was positive. But uh, one of the reasons that people in a city like Bangalore give for not voting is that uh, no candidate actually deserves my vote. This is uh, often said uh, about candidates. Of course, they never find out even who their candidates uh, are. But this time, they had the option to exercise. Of course, they always had 49 vote, but this time it was made a lot simpler to express your dissent, saying that I don't agree with any of the candidates. So that excuse was not there this time to say that I don't like the candidates. You could express your uh, uh, disagreement with the entire political spectrum. Even then, if people do not come out to vote, uh, it's quite sorry actually. You know, I have one more. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Mohan, See, I want to make another point which may be a silly point, but I want to make this point. The anger of the people of Bangalore against corruption and bad infrastructure in Bangalore came out in the assembly election when 11% increment was there and a lot of the BJP uh, members of the National Assembly lost, lost their seats. And then we got a good chief minister. And the chief minister made sure there'd be no scandals, there'd be no corruption, and he's done a decent job. So possibly Bengalurians may feel that the chief minister is doing a good job, and the issues in Bangalore are very local. The issues in Bangalore are not about Delhi, even though there's anger about non-performance in Delhi. The issues are much more local. So I guess the anger has subsided, subsided unlike Delhi. The anger has come down a little bit more. Maybe that's the factor that is people that thought excuse? you could go for a holiday. Uh, 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 is that an excuse? Or I think it's an excuse because even though what Mohandas Pai is saying is absolutely correct, I personally believe that no citizen has this kind of excuse. We have to be more civic minded and I think that is the bane of our cities. I think citizens are too disengaged, too disconnected with the political system and the political process. But one point I want to make, you know there is a, uh, a feeling in Bangalore, at least some of my colleagues at work said to me, we would love to vote, but our votes are in, an, in my native place. So I think we do have to migrants. also recognize that there is a huge migrant population in Bangalore. And I think we must make vote, you know, voting mobile. The voter registration must be a mobile card. And I think digital technology can easily uh, you know, make that happen. So I would like to see this not being made the excuse for not being able to vote. Basically, it's apathy at the end of the day, isn't it? I think there is apathy, yeah. certainly. He, I think there is and disconnection and Nidhi. disengagement and irresponsibility. Nidhi, I want to take on on what Kiran said. I think Kiran has got a great point. Bangalore is the tech capital of India. And I think we must change the way of voting like in the United States. In the United States, if you're traveling or something, you can, do, you can go and vote before. There are different mechanisms of voting. You can do a postal ballot. So I think citizens need a more choice. No, no that's why. I don't think about You know, I humbly, no, walked, I humbly walked to my polling booth and I humbly <laughs> checked my name on the electoral register and then walked again and cast my vote. If the people of Delhi can do it and the people of the rest of this country can do it, I'm sure the citizens of Bangalore can just walk a little bit, stand in line for a while. It's okay. No, it's okay. You also need no, to say. I just, no, what I, I want to say. say one, one moment, sir. One moment. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. The point I want to make yeah. is, though his point is right, Bangalore the question is about uh, voter percentage increment. It is not there in the city, even in the assembly elections. Look at, the, I just saw it at 7 o'clock. Chikmaglo, which is a very rural, mountainous uh, place where people had to walk half a kilometer, one kilometer, two kilometer, and it's the rainy season. 70%. All the rural areas, rural areas of Karnataka, is in the, in the exactly. bottom of 70%. So, yeah. so what I'm saying is, it is nothing but a petty. This guy will go and stand in a queue and get kicked in a uh, sub registrar's office when he wants to register his property when he buys an apartment. He goes and humiliates himself when, when he wants to get a driving license and waits for an hour. He waits for an, two hours in a dentist's office, but he doesn't have the patience to go and get his uh, uh, registration exactly. done. 
exactly so, so i am i disagree with you on that but mr balakrishnan yes as he said there are no footpaths for people to walk on in the city so that's why they don't walk to the polling booth but you know on on the question of aap and the kind of impact it's had in this city can you honestly say that the, the that momentum is still there that was there after delhi do you get a sense that arvind kejriwal's resignation in delhi and the negative backlash from that there also resonated in a sense among voters here who felt that he ran away from responsibility and they were very wary of the aap as a result i know it's hard for you to say that honestly but no, i'm that, still trying the question has been answered some thousand times i think media should be more innovative to come with new questions say look people whom are i met in bangalore they are so fed up with the current mlas corporators mps none of them are delivered on the promises there a lot of anger and people actually wanted change and whatever little bit of increase you have seen in voting share is because of that anger and the results will show you that see at the end of the day even today we have a lot of voters whose name is missing in the list even today a lot of people have got issues with the voter id card i think all this can be tackled by using better technology and people also should involve they don't go and check whether the name is there in the yeah. list or not yeah. Yeah, they exactly. wait till the end on the election day to go to the booth and say my name is not there so i think citizens also have to take care to make sure the name is there in the list they go and vote that is missing in bangalore to some extent mr gaudo how much of an impact do you think aap will have in this election will you be completely dismissive of it uh, or would you concede that there is a factor they seem to be a factor a couple of months ago but subsequently uh, uh their impact has considerably come down uh delhi i'm sure they generated a lot of heat i'm sure in this election also they had an impact but uh, i don't think they have a whole lot of impact uh, in bangalore uh, as you uh, as uh, i think captain also pointed out they seem to have lost the plot along the way that's my assessment Kiran Shaw, why don't people like you jump into politics? You and Mohan Das Pai, why didn't you? Why didn't you think of contesting? If Mr. Balakrishnan can, why not you? Well, you know, personally, I believe that you need a pressure group. As an influencer, I would like to influence change in politics, not jump into it. And I think there's a role for every one of us. My role is to influence change, influence better governance. You don't and think I you think can do I'll that be better? Much better at that. than to really actively participate but in politics but if you're politics. in if you're within the system and you and you are the system don't you think you'd make up no i don't think impact? so because it uh, suddenly constrains and restricts my ability to look at broader issues i think as a pressure group as an influencing group we look at all issues in a very non partisan way and i think we have much better uh, discussions and debates for change and i think this is what is happening in bangalore why are you kiran, laughing mr no, gaudav one kiran, second kiran is being very calm and very composed i think mohan is ready to jump in so we should <laughs> bet on no, mohan no. didi yeah. you having seen all this mohan is like there i are, need to get in i need to fix this whole thing didi there are two of two of us there nandan and bala in the fed you really want more i think yeah. two is enough for bangalore you know no. out of three seats there are two of them contesting two exceptional people do you really want more i think we need more problem solvers in bangalore across the board to do many things rather than elter enter into elteral politics see honestly i think we need somebody like a krishna somebody like a bala somebody like a nanda we need a mix of people krishna comes from the grassroots he's also one of us he's come from the united states he's highly educated he's a grassroots he's been in politics for 10 years you need people like that to come up to to and we need people like kiran and me to fight the battle to get connections with people so we need a broad based movement nidhi everybody should not rush in ba- uh, but mr balakrishnan then what made you decide to take a different path you could have also been part of a pressure group you could have been part of bpack come in place of mr pai no no see the <laughs> challenge in this country is politics is not even seen as a loss option people think coming into politics is dirty right you need role models if some of us actually get in win and be able to make the change or bring about the change i think many people will get it might i add yeah, here yeah. that we've seen a huge surge of young people educated young people in their field <laughs> that have joined bjp in the last 5 years and who've all worked in these elections quite actively so uh, it's a mix of both you know should it be the ceo jumping in or can it be one of their uh, employees you know uh, one, one of the, the other interesting you since you brought up the bjp and i'll take that to captain gopinath first is you know in delhi we are having debates every single day on how this election is an ideological battle 
between different ideologies and primarily it's now become about Mr. Modi. It, it, this election in a sense has become a referendum on whether you want Mr. Modi as PM or you reject him as Prime Minister. I want to understand the view from Bangalore tonight. How does Bangalore and you all here see this ideological battle that at least plays out in TV studios and election rallies? Yeah, I think just on the last question, you know, I, I contested uh, uh, on a BJP ticket when I was a farmer for 10 years. I was a president of BJP Hassan and I lost miserably because BJP didn't exist in those days here about 20 years ago. That I contested as an independent. But on the larger issue, I think you know, it is a full-time uh, job of uh, getting involved. It is not jumping at the, in the last minute you know, with clever campaigning. And of course, in a way, we can always get elected. So I think it, it requires a, a greater involvement of getting your hands dirty and feet dirty. But coming on the Modi issue, I think uh, the more the, the Congress is attacking in the last few days that, uh, you know, vote for, you know, democracy, vote for uh, secularism, vote for uh, collective leadership. I think a, th those are the reasons why Modi is, uh, 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 they are the plus points of Modi because, because there is a, uh, a weakness in the leadership in the center. Uh, all of us know it, that uh, Manmohan Singh, uh, w w was not, he was a good man, capable man, but he didn't have the authority. And, and that is exactly the charge that BJP is making, that is the charge that people are feeling, that he was not an assertive Prime Minister. So when you go and make this statement saying that, you know, don't vote for an authoritarian guy, and I think that is his strength. I'm not recommending... That is authoritarian. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm not recommending... Perceived to be. I'm not saying... Strong. I'm not saying no, okay, that... Okay, I'll take that to Mr. Gowda first, that this is actually a criticism of then the Congress strategy. That, uh, why are you making this election, uh, you know, about, about the idea of India? Is there only one idea of India uh, uh, that only the Congress party holds? Uh, no, the idea of India is one where everybody has a space. You can't say, now in fact, the BJP is a worried lot because BJP is subsumed under the leadership of one man. Today, I opened the uh, newspaper in the morning. There is a Modi and the entire front page and the BJP symbol occupies barely one square inch of that space mm -hmm. in the whole uh, front page of the newspaper. I, no, I so BJP itself is getting sidelined. It is about Modi, it's not about a BJP government. So that is a threat to the future of India. That's a threat to the idea of India. Our idea of India is one where everybody is included. I have, uh, uh, this is my fourth term in the legislature. Legislature. I go to my constituency. There are so many problems in my constituency. People ask me. I tell them, look, we will all try to get to solve your issues. <laughs> if, some, if I were to tell them that, look, I am going to solve all your problems, I would be the most dishonest representative for my assembly. If one man promises that, he can solve all the problems, uh, 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 all the problems of the country, then that's being very dishonest. You can't do it. Similarly, in India, where everybody, the poor, the rich, all colors of people, everybody has okay. a space, that's so, the idea that Congress is, is trying But is to that how the people of forward. Bangalore see it? I want to understand, you know, everyone, was, everyone talks about a Modi wave everywhere we go, you know, whether it's there, isn't there. May I just uh, step in for a moment? One moment, you know, and... and there obviously wasn't a great impact of Mr. Modi in the assembly elections. Now, do you feel that there is a Modi wave in this city? This you know, time, Lok Sabha is different. Yes, so I want to just sort of mention one very important fact, Nidhi, and that is, if you look at the Lok Sabha elections and the assembly elections, it is a mirror image of what people are angry about. People want a strong government, a performing government, and a scam-free government. So if you see what's happening today, UPA is staring defeat because people are angry that it did not perform and it wasn't strong enough to deliver a scam-free government. What happened to BJP here? The same thing. People were angry that the BJP did not deliver good governance and a scam-free uh, government and they were voted out. So today, people want Modi, people want BJP, people want NDA at the centre because they believe that let's give them now that opportunity to be strong and deliver good governance what about what and Sonia good Gandhi performance. What about what Sonia Gandhi said about Bhartiya and Hindustaniya? Well, you know, does I, that, think does today that people, you? I think today people really want good delivery of development, governance and scam-free performance. That's what people want. And if that is what today 
the uh, you know modi is talking about and if that's the modi rhetoric then people are saying okay let's go with it so you must understand today every government today we have a good government in bangalore the congress government and the cm here is showing that he is strong he will deliver if he does not deliver he has to again okay but mr balakrishnan how do you define strong that is the a key question in every debate about narendra modi and the bjp today no, no, look first of all there is no modi wave let's be real modi wave is only in the posters where he's waving spending some 5000 crores he's waving okay right today is anti congress wave people are fed up with the center fed up with the scam the country has come to a standstill with a dysfunctional government right we don't need a strong leader or a weak leader we need a good leader governance is the biggest problem in this country country is not a poor country central government spends a lot of money even here bbmp spends some 17000 crores on roads in the last 10 years we are not even one single road see how this road is right so i think people are fed up of the governance they all want corruption free government and that is where they are looking for change people are not looking for strong leader weak leader both are bad for the country we need a good leader we have been missing a good leader for a long time that is what people are looking at bangalore especially are worried about local issues they don't care about what is happening in the government you go to slums they're all worried about water is not there roads are not there garbage is the problem they don't care about your foreign policy so things are different here bangalore is all about local issues people are fed up both the governments are not done anything we have seen the worst of both the governments in this state and people want a change that will be reflected in the votes okay you're saying it's about local issues mohan das pai i just want to read out to you uh, a blog that gurcharan das recently wrote which uh, has evoked a lot of reaction where he said that you know uh, there's a clear risk in voting for modi he's polarizing sectarian and authoritarian but he says there is a greater risk in not voting for him it is not by and if you don't you will lose the about 8 or 10 million jobs that youth would get every year if he comes to power now his critics say that you know is it fair to trade off secularism for development do they not go hand in hand you know that's the ideological battle at play here didi this ideological battle is resurrected by the congress whenever they are losing an election it has been done for the last 40 years i heard the same thing for the last 40 years the rise didn't come down in 1984 1993 we had the rise 2002 we had the rise the so same debate is going on i think india has moved on and let me explain to you why the idea of india came out in the freedom movement is the result of the freedom movement when lot of people came together the idea of india came out in the constitutional assembly debates is encapsulated in the constitution it is not a gift of his party not a gift of jawalal nehru not a gift of a family it is there in the constitution people of india understand that so the whole debate of secularism communism has to be given a go by because people want the rule of law if there's a rule of law there'll be no communalism there'll be nothing they will be the rights given to us by the constitution i think educated people understand that so the resurrect the old ghost whenever they feel the losing the election like bala said today the main issues people want is a good quality of life they want water in the tap they want power in the street they want good roads less traffic they want jobs for the children now the issue of i am communal you are secular is being done just to confuse people and create fear in the minorities I'll take but the everybody is for the good quality of life these are not the issues is this an election tactic uh, are you playing not. on fears it's definitely not an election tactic <laughs> and i feel very uh, uh, sorry that the very fundamental definition of our society is just being treated as an election issue it's not an election issue look yes people want to hear a strong voice but do you want to play to the gallery or do you want to really focus on fundamental issues can one man if you think of gujarat you can only think of one man as far as bjp is concerned you can't name one other bjp leader in gujarat can the nation go with that model all we are saying is indra gandhi nation is composed of different yes, kinds yes, of people you indra gandhi back at you indra gandhi i i i stand by the point yes, let me yes, let me 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 let can one man solve all the problems of this country definitely not and if one man is promising to solve the problems then he is being fundamentally dishonest about his job about his commitment to the society <laughs> i think that's a dangerous proposition for the country malvika yes uh, i think i'm going to take off from where mr pai left off 
he spoke of the idea of India that emerged soon after independence. The idea of secular emerged soon after 1977 when Indira Gandhi forcibly thrust it upon us into the constitution. So the idea of India that existed in 1947 did not need to battle or question or debate secularism. I think we all accepted that there is and there, uh, there has been uh, communal harmony in this country. There have been spurt of riots, but besides that, and they have been so during the Congress regime as well. So to uh, uh, attribute all of it to Narendra Modi doesn't make sense or to BJP also. As far as leadership crisis is concerned, I think Sanjay Baru's book speaks of it in enormous volumes of how there was a super prime minister over the prime minister and how ineffective the prime minister himself has been in the last uh, 10 years. And um, when it comes to uh, this one-man show, I am going to um, take him back to the ordinance uh, situation where Rahul Gandhi came and overruled an entire cabinet's decision. Yeah. So what does he have to say of that? Mr. Gowda? Yeah. That was a suggestion made by the party, Congress party, oh, yes. to the government. Oh, yes. And that reflected the mood of the country. It was a strong recommendation made from the party. So the, party, uh, the cabinet discussed it and accepted, revised its own decision. So it's the will of the so people, when the vice will of the nation getting expressed and so getting ultimately respected the by the government of India. Okay, Nithi, Captain you know, I'm saying, yeah. Regardless of whatever uh, Krishna Bairagoda and rest of them will say, we all know the authority rests with Sonia Gandhi, both the foreign press, the yeah. Indian press, okay. in, insiders, outsiders, everybody has said the authority issue. is with her, but no accountability with her. So give the dog a bad name when things go wrong and that's what they did to Manmohan Singh. This is a sad thing. Uh, he should have resigned uh, even a thing after UPA won. But having said that, the point I'm making is that throughout history, whenever there has been weakness by the rulers, it could be kings, it could be emperors, whenever there is degeneration, when there is uh, a lot of uh, instability, weakness, there is always a new authoritarian person who takes over. I'm not saying it's good, but I'm saying that is a tendency. So people, now but, whatever... But do you realize that this entire conversation we're having, we're not talking about then the impact that AAP is going to have. I come back to that question because, you know, you, you are a member of that party. Uh, the AAP decided to contest 400 plus seats and, yeah, and we're not talking about it as a national force at all. Yeah, Two I, months I, ago we were. I think because, because uh, AAP has in a sense become a bit irrelevant in the last two months uh, because they, I think, uh, spread themselves too thin. Even I wrote about it, spoke about it publicly saying that they should focus on 20, 25, 30 seats. It takes time to build an organization, it takes time to build a party. You need resources, you need time. Kejiwa should, uh, should, have, should have focused on uh, just 25 seats because he's not using a jet, he's not using a helicopter. With, with the jet and with the helicopter, uh, uh, Manmo, uh, 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 Modi is able to only uh, reach 180 to 200 constituencies. So you need Are you still a member of AAP, by the way? I am a member, they haven't expelled me, I haven't resigned. <laughs> but I am speaking my mind, because this, this I am speaking as, my, as an individual. And I think uh, everything that I said, you know, you know, is turning out to be to true. Mr. Hey, here's your fellow AAP member, who is actually a, the, outspoken from the beginning. So, was that a mistake you think 400 plus seats over ambitious? Because now we don't speak of AAP as that third force that we once did, even 2-3 months ago. Wait for May 16, you can have your view. See, at the end of the day, what you're trying to do, it's like a startup, trying to grow big. So you need to enrich the core. So if you are able to uh, contest in many seats, you'll be able to attract a lot of good talent. If some of those talent actually win and come to the core, I think the party will be strengthened in the long term. It is good uh, strategy what you adopted. And whether AAP is going to make an impact or not, you can say whatever you want, go and meet people, there's no, a strong... I'm, no, no, wait, wait. I'm pointing out the fact that there are people, not just Captain Gopinath, but others who've left up, who've vocally spoken against no, that the party. In there, every party. No, but is there, is there ideological incoherence no, in a sense? No every party, people go out, they have a different view on the party. Nidhi. That's okay, that is part of democracy. Nidhi. Okay. At the end Nidhi. of the day, strong undercurrent is there, that is what matters. Nidhi. Wait okay. for the election results. Undercurrent wave, yes. the disillusionment yeah. of citizens of this country against the established order. We saw in the United States the Tea Party movement come up. We saw the Liberal Democrats in the UK win along with the Conservatives to form the government and they were a third force and AAP will bring about greater change in India because they are the margin and they represent the voice of people who want change in the established parties because the established parties are status quoists. They don't want police reforms. 
because they're hand in hand in glove with the police. They will not bring about change because all of them make good money. So we need somebody like an app to drive change at the heart of the governance issue. Ask but, no, we have to be, about RTA no. applicability for political parties. How the funding comes? Nobody wants to talk about it. You know, I be transparent, no? I I I am also saying that the whole country has to be grateful to Anahazari first and then to Kejriwal because they completely changed the, uh, the, discourse. The, the, the discourse, the nature of politics. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have to be grateful to them. The point I made was that they should have calibrated their, uh, their you know... Uh, Kiran Majumdar, Shah, do you agree with that? Should they have stuck to 30 seats? And were they over ambitious up? See, I think we have to give them a chance. They are a new party and as Bala very rightly said, it's a start-up, okay? They will make mistakes. I think they, you know, they have quickly learned from that mistake of vacating Delhi too early. I think they will continue to make a few more mistakes. But I think we must give them an opportunity because we need a party what like What is the up. impact that mistake had in Bangalore, according well, to your feedback? Well, I think feedback. it certainly had an uh, impact in Bangalore because I think people who were expecting a lot of up felt that maybe they are not ready yet. Maybe they are not in a position to make that impact that people wanted. So I think we have to give them a chance, but I think we need AAP because as Mohandas Pai said, we need a party like AAP to be a change Absolutely. maker, to drive reforms which no other party is willing to take head on. I'm going to ask the two yeah. uh, uh, mainstream parties on that because you have no love lost for the AAP, but would you at least concede the kind of change they brought in the political it's discourse true, today? It's true. They were impactful while they came about three months ago or four months ago. <laughs> and. Uh, Let's understand that every political party is born out of activism and some movement, be it the Congress party or the BJP or the AAP. So there's nothing special about being a party that came out of some kind of activism. It's also true that a lot was expected of them, that uh, uh, they did well in Delhi, winning 28. Uh, and also what followed, uh, you know, this whole untouchability that they spoke of and immediately joined hands with the Congress and formed the government in Delhi and thereafter unable to sustain, had several protests on the streets of Delhi and at the end of 49 days gave up and left. So I think they, they'll have a long uh, But you way know, to go. this whole thing about the AAP impact, you wrote a blog, Captain Gopinath, actually saying recently that initially the kind of politics AAP brought in also forced mainstream parties to step back and think about what they were doing in their own kind of politics. But it all went back to square one with the kind of you know, you saw the party hoppers, you saw criminal candidates. By the way, both the BJP and the Congress are guilty of give, giving people with criminal backgrounds a, a high number tickets in this election. So, it doesn't seem to have really rubbed off in the way mainstream parties do their politics. Yeah, I think it, you know, initially had a very big impact because if you saw, uh, when, the, when, the, uh, when they were short of uh, uh, MLAs uh, in the Delhi elections, the BJP required uh, just about uh, four or five MLAs to form a government or six or seven MLAs to form a government. And the BJP in Karnataka openly, blatantly, brazenly had an Operation Kamal where the en masse purchased during Edirapa's time. They purchased MLAs from Congress and the BJP. It is also an ignominy on, on BJP and Congress that they were so easily purchasable. So they were masters in, uh, in, in this. They were being taken away to resorts. You know, it was a resort politics in Karnataka. 25 crores. In fact, I had myself given my helicopters. There's a figure also. I had myself given my helicopters the and aircraft for price. these uh, people to be uh, whisked away to these. Uh, Are you agreeing to this? Because you're nodding. So I'm, I'm listening. Oh, one second, one second. I'm really you know, listening. Uh, uh, it's very hard I'm to I'm telling listen. you, they had, they had hired my aircraft to take away these uh, MLAs to resorts. I want to say this. So what I'm saying is, the fact that the AAP impact was so strong, they, 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 were, they were saying, well, I don't want to form a government. The point I also say that yeah. Operation but Kamala Mamit is the not AAP something the BJP is proud of. It's not. 2013 taught us that it, it's I, I, not something yeah. we need to be proud of. No, but, but uh, Nidhi, the last point. I think we are willing to no. achieve that. She's being honest about that. What I'm saying is, when the AAP effect wore off. Nidhi, in the operation, I met a senior leader in the same resort because we had gone for a dinner and I asked him what is happening. He's saying they're asking too much of money. They're asking 25 crores. We offer them 5 crores. <laughs> I mean, I must know how it works. Mohan, it was wonderful. Yes, Mr. Been Gowda, on eBay. Mr. Gowda, one, yeah. one, one point. Yeah. The point I was saying is that in Delhi, what happened was that after the AAP effect wore off, after the you know, Bharti incident, you know, there was a series of things. He's, he's participating in a protest, which he should not have done, abdicating the responsibility. whole lot of incidents that, that 
then they realize both the parties realize they were smart they were intuitively very smart politically very smart they realize aap is no longer the force that it was they themselves have uh, uh, in a kind of uh, you know uh, uh, gone down in the eyes of the public that's when all the defection defection started mr balakrishnan you want to you you want to let him get away with that no. see this kind of messages keeps coming wait for may 16 you will know the real impact on the ground there a lot of strong undercurrent people are fed up with both the parties you will see the results but wait for it but it has been predicted much in bangalore for them has it uh, no wait for I, well well that's what the opinion poll says the opinion poll is not very kind to up yes mr gowda no, it always uh, never it was kind we were talking about the overall app up uh, impact on the polity see as a as a, as i said earlier we believe in plurality that extends to the political space also i have uh, uh, personally i believe that uh, you know aap uh, is good uh, for our political system there is a space which if the uh, large political parties cannot recognize it it happens it not just in politics it's good it to hear happens. you say that because no, often in delhi politicians don't concede that and that's great no, the to congress vice that. president said it no, no, no. the congress is very happy well, yeah. he said that no, no, uh, you think he'll have to understand that not, congress me, is very me, happy with him let him say let me let me let me he's making a making good point there is absolute i am i am surrounded by corporate giants on my side it happens in the private sector also often why do startups come up because the large corporations cannot identify Uh, the spaces that exist in the society so similarly Brilliant. these voices are picked up by more agile uh, 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 no, organizations ultimately point. that's the first point so we believe that they have a right to exist we believe everybody has a right to exist not just up everybody has a right to exist uh, we don't say that you know you you can't exist at all be it in politics anywhere second yeah, point yeah, second yeah. point yeah. second point is that So through this experiment uh, we are also hoping that the mainstream parties will gradually internalize this learning which is Brilliant. what congress is trying to do we are trying we have been for the last 2 3 years bringing in processes of internal democracy this time we experimented with the primary system you may argue it's a great system don't say oh, women in parliament one minute yeah uh, uh, it's a large political party it's the grand old party of india so which is actually is experimenting i, I, I just actually, want to ask mr balakrishna no, 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 a point no, no, that you let said let me, yeah let me, let me complete my point so the grand old party is experimenting with new ideas of internal democracy of a primary system yeah. however good or not so good <laughs> we are going to improve upon it we are going to learn from this experience yeah. number th- so this is again we start by having a cwc election for a change elect your party president for a change yeah. it it has started the process has started overnight you can't do if you try to do overnight we saw what happened in delhi i come know, to that point <laughs> so the great, the large organizations you know like they would the vote for it large organizations Somehow. cannot change overnight yeah, yeah. but they do internalize the learnings from smaller organizations so it's yeah. up to the mainstream parties to respond to this trend and to absorb okay. these trends i just uh, i just have the last two minutes last point yeah. last point i need to make so these are the two positives from this experiment but unfortunately look i am an mla uh, when i am faced mla fortunately mla fortun- no uh, I, uh, whatever fortunately <laughs> unfortunately i am an mla uh, when i am faced with constituency problems or i am a minister i am faced with a complicated problem the easiest thing for me to do is actually you know resign from my responsibility there <laughs> easiest thing believe me i can throw my hands up i can be a cry baby but just stay on i can fight. blame it uh, blame it on others saying that this guy didn't do this this guy didn't do this so i can't deliver and rather than from the responsibility doing. governance is about delivering yeah. solutions I, in a very complex and complicated situation i do situation. want to ask before before so we wrap up that's where up has failed yeah okay on that up has failed but mr balakrishnan your own experience i just wanted to ask you about that because it's it's been fascinating to me when you see you know you've declared uh, you know sort of your assets and cost mr nilikani's uh, uh, how much he's worth is is just mind boggling and yet people like you have jumped into the political fray i i have to ask why because you didn't have to you could still be wearing the corporate suit uh, or or you know a nice crisp white shirt right now but you know you got into the rough and tumble of it how is it been oh that is the problem in this country all of us think is somebody else's problem and we all happy sitting outside and criticize them for not doing so unless some of us actually get into the system system is not going to change 
the both the political parties. Was it tougher than you thought? The campaign. It is always tougher. It is very hectic, but I enjoy it because the difference between like a moon and a Mars. Corporate world is different. Political world is different. I understand that. But again, the current political parties are so steeped into that legacy. They are not willing to change. So unless a new person with fresh thinking, fresh mind, come into the system, make them change, is not going to change. That is why some of us are getting in. Probably this country lacks role models. If some of us actually get into the political system, able will to you, bring but about will you a change. Will you stay on even if you don't win this election? Will you still stay on as a, in politics? We all know it's a long-term journey what we have taken. That's we will stay on. Question. We will make sure My things change. We will make them me. accountable. And whether we win our election or not, it doesn't matter. We are here for the long term. But unless you create a lot of role models, not many people will come into the system. That's so politics is your new calling, no matter what happens in yes, this election. I made it very clear earlier. All right, last I, word, Kiran Majum. I just sure. wish more women candidates would have yeah. been fielded, fielded this time. Yeah. I just and feel that's, very sorry that's, that's, that parties that, that's did true not across get parties life. probably. I have to leave it at that. Yeah, I am city. completely out of time. I, it has been yes. fascinating to talk to all of you tonight to like get a like perspective. Like Arnab can you extend it to another two hours? <laughs> no, I wish I could, but we, we could stay on. But it's been lovely to talk that's to all of you, not just about you know the issues here and, and the voter turnout here in this big city tonight uh, but also to get a sense of how you look at what we think are national issues back in Delhi especially in our studios and in our TV debates. Thank you very much Thank and you. good luck to you uh, Mr. Balakrishnan in, in this tough contest. Thank you all for joining us tonight. We are back in the national capital tomorrow. See you then. Good night.